So you are now a vice president. You have climbed the ladder of success, rung by painful rung, until you have almost reached the top. You have done beautifully. Unless you are vice president in charge of advertising. <laughs> in that case, you are in terrible trouble. There is only one thing that can save you. You must get a brilliant idea. The quickest way to get ideas is to develop them. That is, you must examine the undeveloped, worthless notions of others and add to them that extra something that makes the idea your own. An undeveloped notion may come from the least likely source. Be alert. You never know who will bring it to you. Hi, Tony. Oh, hi, bud. Sorry I busted in, but there was no one outside. First time I've had a chance to see your new office. Quite a layout. Ooh! My favorite style, Chinese provincial. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I suppose you're wondering why I'm here. Frankly, yes. Well, Tony, I just want you and me to be friends. You know, a uh, smoke and peace pipe. You never liked me. Well... Now don't deny it, it's true, and, and I don't blame you. I've been a low-down, backbiting fake. Oh, but that's a bit strong. How would you put it? Maybe your way was best. <laughs> well, anyway, um, I want to change all that. Now, um, I know you're stuck for an idea. Now, I was wait thinking... a minute. I am not stuck. I was thinking that giveaway programs are going to make a comeback. Whoa, stop it, look. If there's one thing I will not do, is steal another man's idea. What was that? I have this idea for a giveaway program. It's called the Worldwide Wicked Treasure Hunt. We hide a thousand dollar savings bond somewhere, and every week on television we give away clues as to where it is. Now, as you say, you don't need any ideas, but let me just leave that here with you. And if you get a chance, look it over. Because, I mean, the meeting's in a few little while. I mean, it's soon. But what did your uncle say when you told him about this? Oh, I didn't tell him about it. He wouldn't have listened to me. That's why I brought it to you. You never mentioned this to your uncle? No, Potty. <laughs> um, say, listen, if you're not interested, I guess I could just take it Well, back. the idea doesn't give me much nourishment, but I'll give it a little bit of a think-think. Feel free to use it. Where you might be 
checking out some new plastic yarn. Hey, I told you, never to come in here. What the hell do you want? Uh, JB, do you remember that television idea I once told you about? The, the, the treasure hunt? I told you what I thought of that treasure hunt. I, I just wanted to remind you that you didn't like it. Oh, Hetty, I told you that during office hours, I can't meet with you. I did not intend to embarrass you. I just came for a business purpose. Business? I wish to tender you with my resignation. Resignation? What are you going to do? I'm going to Los Angeles. I've been offered a very suitable position there. Los Angeles, Hetty, you can't. Now tell me, what this is all about? I just got a letter from a girlfriend. She's working for a big cosmetics firm out there. <coughs> she demonstrates skin creams. Skin creams? Yes, in all those big, glamorous department stores. And she can get me a job. That's undignified. You can't run around demonstrating some fake goo. It is not a fake goo. Do you know what it's made from? Please don't tell me. It's made from shark belly jelly. I was afraid of that. Betty, you said you wanted a career. What kind of future is there in shark bellies? More than there is around here. Not a single guy around here will use me as his secretary. They stay away from me like I had an extremely tropical disease. Oh, Betty, if you could just be patient. No. I've made up my mind. Bon voyage. Well, good luck, dear. Huh? Uh, I'll manage somehow. Only how will I spend those lonely nights? You can stay home. I can't stay home. I'm a married man. <laughs> oh, you'll do all right. Oh, Hetty, I can't live without you. You mean that? Of course I do. Oh, I know I seem to have everything. Old rich J.B. Bigley, old money bags. People come to me with treasure hunts. My day is spent talking money. And what does it all mean? Nothing. Penny, nothing means anything without you. Now, wait a minute. Don't start getting sincere. That's not fair. <laughs> Where will I find a treasure like the love from the heart of Ever trusting and sweet and awaiting my pleasure. Rain or shine, hot or cold. Well, far beyond all measure, maybe here in my hands I hold. Ah, but where will I find that one treasure? of treasures the love from a heart of gold I never knew you felt that way No one knows it, but I'm extremely emotional Oh, God damn it, so am I <laughs> Where will I find a treasure like a
I should be very angry with you, cutie pie. Hi, Hetty. Uh, where's Miss Jones? I wanted to speak to Mr. Bigley. Oh, uh, you can go in. He's not doing nothing. Say, Hetty. Are you quitting? Unless I hear otherwise to the contrary. Well, maybe we can help out each other. Good. Let's bust out together. I've got a different idea. I'd like to be able to speak to you alone. Where do we go? Let's go to my place. Hetty, this is business. OK, let's go to your place. Hetty! <laughs> Tell you what, take me out and buy me lunch. What right about 1 o'clock? I'll meet you downstairs. Well. Look, do you want to talk or don't you? Well, OK, I'll meet you downstairs at 1, but around the corner. Gotcha, cutie. Chicken. <laughs> postponement, so he must have something. You know, fellas, I'm really beginning to get a little scared of Finch. Yeah. Man, me too. If we don't do something pretty soon. They'll probably have us all working in the mail room. Hi, man. You hear anything, bud? Oh, chaps, our worries are over. Oh, Finchy boy's going ahead with... Well, believe me, he's dead. Dead, dead, dead. I'm so happy I can cry. That's great, pleasant news. Cry. <laughs> Finch has a way of bouncing. I wouldn't believe he was dead if I read his obituary. Yeah, ordinarily I'd agree with you. Finch is very smart. But let's remember one thing. He's now in advertising. This does something to men's brains. Uh-oh. Um, has anybody seen my Wild Root Cream Oil? Hiya, men. Oh, oh, Finch. Uh, yeah. All ready for the big meeting? Oh, could be. Could be. Wish me luck. Good luck. Oh.
spends his time in the fields, the laborer at his machine, and the businessman at meetings. Gentlemen, where's Finch? Not here yet, sir. Well, we'll start without him. We have a lot of other business to take care of before we come to Finch's presentation. Ah, uh, Brad. Yes, J.B. That stuff you recommended for my crabgrass doesn't work at all. Well, I can't understand it. It works beautifully on my lawn. Yeah, my lawn is a mess. Better come up with something new. Right. We never have any trouble with crabgrass at our place. What do you use? Cement. <laughs> Sorry, J.B. Just a little joke. Gentlemen, you'll excuse my nephew, but it's a combination of youth, high spirits, and extreme stupidity. <laughs> now, let's see. Yes? Oh, we've been waiting for him. Send him in. It's Finch. Gentlemen, I'd like to present to you my new approach to wicked advertising, which, in my humble opinion, is brilliant. Now, it's promising, Finch. Proceed. What the hell is that? That is a picture of Mount Vesuvius in eruption. That will give you some idea of the impact that our new television program is going to have on the public. And now, JB, the kind of national publicity you can look forward to. The cover of time. Oh, bruh. <laughs> the cover of Newsweek. And finally, JB, Gopher of the Year. Very interesting, yes. Now, gentlemen, this is a map of the potential wicked market. It is divided into social, geographic, and ethnic groups. It shows how we will make deep penetration and overwhelming saturation into those areas where resistance to sales has long been peakiest. Yes, I like this thinking. Thank you. Now, this is a sales chart of the past fiscal year. Notice the disastrous effect that our former advertising policy has had in per capita consumption of sales of wickets. Notice the decline, gentlemen. Down, down, down. But this is what's going to happen to our sales once we get going, which we will. Up, up, up. And there you are. Mitch, I think you've done it. Very good. <laughs> JB, uh, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, what's his idea? You heard a television show that gives us penetration and peak reaction. Very good, Mitch. Very good. Where's the gentleman? But, uh. but what's his idea for the show? I don't know why you have to be so damn negative. The only things you ever come up with are lousy ideas like treasure hunts. <laughs> All right, Finch, what is the idea for the show? I don't think I'm going to tell you. What do you mean? Well, you know, J.B., I've always thought of you as a man of breadth and vision, open to new ideas, yeah. but now I just don't know. I'm thrown. By what? By the way you just spoke to Bud just now about his idea, the way you just dismissed it. I mean, there are treasure hunts. And then there are treasure hunts. <laughs> when Bud first brought me the idea, I thought it was a rotten idea, too. Well, I should hope so. But then I remembered something, J.B. An idea in itself is nothing. It's the development that counts. <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci drew some sketches of a flying machine. But it took American know-how to take those simple little sketches and develop it into the Boeing 707. A man named Gatling developed a simple little machine gun. But it took an American genius to take that simple little machine gun and develop it into a mighty program like the Untouchables. <laughs> when I thought of that, that silly little idea became a challenge to me. I said, I'm going to take the silly idea of butt frumps and de frump it. <laughs> First of all, my treasure is not a bomb, and it's not money, it's stock! Stock! 50,000 shares of stock! Stock and I have People like stock better than money these days. How can we issue 50,000 extra? 
extra shares of stocks. No problem. It's a simple matter of taking the convertible debentures from the sinking fund, issuing stock options, which are exchangeable for rights, which we then convert it to not vote in common, and replace with warrants. Tell me that again. I can't. It can't be done, JB. It can't, it can't be, done. be done. But if it could, JB. But it can't be done. But if it could, wouldn't it create tremendous publicity? But it can. But if it could, JB, just for a moment, say it could be done. Now, what's your answer? I forgot the question. <laughs> we can't give away stock. We give away stock dividends, don't we? Now, gentlemen, please, let me go on with my presentation. We're ready! Fitch, I hate giveaway shows. Oh, so do I, JV, but the public loves them. And the first person that comes up with a completely unrigged, unfixed way to give away something for nothing is going to clean up! And I have that new twist. Gentlemen! The Worldwide Wicket Treasure Girl! <laughs> what is this? This is the secret ingredient. The thing that's going to take the country by storm. I'm combining greed with sex. It can't miss. <laughs> Go ahead, Hetty. Hello there. I'm the Worldwide Wicked Treasure Girl. Each week, I'm going to bring you a clue to where the Worldwide Treasure has been stashed. Buried. Oh, yeah, buried. This eye patch gets me all mixed up. <laughs> Isn't this a cute outfit? I just love it. <laughs> demonstrate my idea. Oh, naturally. She's not going to be the real treasure girl. I thought when we go on the air, we'd need a big name personality. Oh, of course. Well, I'm leaving the firm anyway. Of course, I wouldn't. I thought this part would be perfect for somebody like um, Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> Why not get Queen Elizabeth? This is an American program. Now, GB, with the treasure girl, J.B., J.B., let's just tell this maniac off and get on with our business. Just a moment, I'll handle this. Gentlemen and uh, Miss LaRue, would you leave me alone with Mr. Fitch? Please? All right, J.B., you take care. This is crazy. What about the SEC? What about the Senate Investigating Committee? They're all being petty. Fitch, you're a brilliant young chap, but I'm afraid you've let us down. How, J.B.? You've missed the boat. You haven't thought this out properly. I don't understand, J.B. Yeah, now tell me, why must the treasure girl be a big name personality? <laughs> <laughs> Sir? I mean, why couldn't she be someone uh, more, uh, more, uh... Yeah, someone more I identified with the company. <laughs> Say, a, a real... A real worldwide wicked girl? Yes. Say, maybe even uh, Miss LaRue herself. Oh, J.B., what a brilliant idea! Instead of hiring an artificial actress, we'll have plain, simple Hetty LaRue, the girl next door. Oh, J.B., that's a brilliant thought! It wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> Where are you going to hide the treasure? Oh, no, 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 JB. This show is going to be completely unrigged. Not even the treasure girl is going to know where the treasure is hidden. But I'd like to know. Well, okay, it'll be our little secret. Now, here's the first clue that the treasure girl is going to give out over the air. West of the sun, west of the moon, where is the treasure? Blow me a tune. What the hell is that? <laughs> Tough clue, isn't it? But if you will note, the first letter of each line is WWWB. Worldwide Wicked Buildings. You'll be using our building. I'm going to hide 5,000 shares of stock in each of the 10 Worldwide Wicked Buildings around the country. We'll get tremendous tr publicity. But you'll have mobs of people running all over the buildings looking for the treasure. <laughs> JV, if a man as brilliant and as educated as you are couldn't guess from that clue, 
Do you think that the average viewer is going to be able to guess? Good point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gentlemen, you can come back in now. Uh, gentlemen, I'm thinking of going ahead with a worldwide wicked treasure hunt. Of course, I'll want your approval. Well, Jamie, I think it's an absolutely crazy motion, and I, I don't like, like it. I like it. We <laughs> like it. <laughs> years has been Worldwide Wickets for a Whiter World presents in living color in the interest of better television programming the Worldwide Wicket Treasure Hunt. And now for the opening number we present an authentic traditional folk dance of the bold pirate folk of the Spanish main dance for your pleasure by the Jolly Wickets! Yo ho ho! Treasure girl, this gentleman is carrying a Bible. Will you place your right hand on it, please? Miss LaRue, do you swear that there has been no fixing or rigging in connection with this show? <laughs> and that the clue you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, free from any trickery, chicanery, or dishonesty? Is this a real Bible? Why, of course, Miss LaRue. What's the matter with her? She looks surprised. She is. Hetty didn't know about this. I wanted this part of the show to be completely spontaneous and unrehearsed. That could be very dangerous. I it's very offensive. Do you swear to that, Miss LaRue? I do. And secondly, Miss LaRue, do you swear that you yourself do not know where the treasure is actually hidden? Do you swear to that, Miss LaRue? Miss LaRue? You see, we're going to get into trouble. Why, J.B.? Only you and I know where the treasure is hidden. She doesn't know. Does she? You watch the program. Miss LaRue, do you swear that you yourself do not know where the treasure is actually hidden? Look, I don't wish to take any photographs. I will not swear false witness to perjury. I do know where the treasure is. I found out last night. <laughs> there is treasure hidden in all the worldwide wicked building right oh now.
How to handle a disaster. In every businessman's career, there are times when things go a bit wrong. We have many suggestions for coping with these little problems. However, should you be the cause of a disaster that's really disastrous, we suggest that your best bet is to review the first chapter of this book, How to Apply for a Job. Has anyone found Finch yet? He seems to have disappeared. Can't find him. No, we're still looking for him. Where's Finch? I don't know, brat. Well, J.B. wants him as fast as you can find him. He's hopping mad. Hey, come back here, you! Oh, what are you doing? It's another treasure hunter. This little nut's trying to sneak past me three times. But this little nut is the chairman of the board, Mr. Whopper. Chairman of the board? <laughs> I'm very sorry this happened, Mr. Whopper. If you're just coming to me, Mr. Bigley's waiting in his office. Luckily, they didn't wreck that. Fine, Finch. Oh, hello, Rosemary. Have you seen Ponzi? Oh, no, Miss Jones, and I'm so worried about him. Oh, so am I. He was a nice boy. Was? What do you think they'll do to him? I don't know, but somebody's head has to roll. Ponty will think of something. Ponty? Oh, Ponty. Oh, Rosemary, I'm so glad you're here. Where have you been? I've been walking the streets, thinking, thinking. There's a bruise on your forehead. I know, I, I got it last night. They threw me out of the saloon. Why did they do that? Because I didn't buy anything. Oh, the bruise. Why don't you go home? No. I've got to go in there and face the music. The chairman of the board is in there. I figured that. Well, what are you going to do? Do? What does a man do when the whole world has collapsed around his ears? Nothing, Mom. I'm just going to go in and take what's coming to me. Oh, but Ponty, I know that mind of No, me. Rosemary, look, I put that mind of mine away. I'm just going to go in, take the blame, and go back to doing what it was before I came here. What were you? I was an interior decorator. <laughs> oh, look at that. I can't even tell you the truth. I was a janitor. So what? I don't care what you do. I'm sticking. I walked out on you once. You did? Well, I'm not going to leave you again. No, Rosemary. Look, that's no kind of life for you being the wife of a janitor. Now, you listen to me. And <laughs> you're wanted in JB's office. <laughs> They want you now. Want me to say goodbye to Rosemary first? Go ahead. Rosemary, goodbye. I'm really sorry. Come about along. You. Bye, Rosemary. I'm really sorry that any of this ever happened. <laughs> better here. Gentlemen, you know Mr. Wally Whopper, the chairman of the board. Now, Wally, let me tell you before we go any further that I realize that I'm the president of this company, the man who's responsible for everything that goes on around here. So let me state right now that anything that happened 
is not my fault. <laughs> but you'll be happy to know there's a bright side to this whole thing, Wally. We've got somebody to pin it on. Have you found Fitz yet? They're bringing him in. Good. Wally, you'll soon see where the responsibility for the whole thing lies. When he gets here, I'll do the talking. This is a very slick youngster, Wally. Here he is, sir. Hello, Mr. Bigley, Mr. Bigley. Never mind, him. I'll do the talking. Oh, by the way, you've never met Mr. Whopper. This is the chairman of the board. How do you do, Mr. Whopper? Mr. Whopper, I'd like no to say anything. No speeches, Finch, it's all settled. I want you to sign a simple little letter of resignation in which you accept all the blame for what happened. Okay, I'll be glad to. What's that? I said I'll do what you said. You sure this is one of your tricks? No, Mr. Bigley, look, this company has been pretty good to me, so I'm just gonna sign the paper, take the blame, and go back to doing what it was before I came here. What did you do, Finch? I was a janitor. <laughs> no kidding. I started out as a janitor myself. <laughs> you did? What the hell do you think I was, a rail splitter? <laughs> College man. So you were a janitor? Yes, Mr. Whopper. Call me Wally. Okay. Wally. Uh, tell me, Fitcher. Please, call me, Ponty. Okay, Ponty. Boy, it's been a long time since I had someone around here I could talk to. How did you happen to get into this business? Well, I had this book. Yeah, me too. It was a book on how to succeed in business. <laughs> My book was more useful. I booked bets for all the other janitors. <laughs> I cleaned up a fortune. I should have stood that. <laughs> These buildings wrecked. Our stock is now five points. We're the laughing stock of the industry. I know, Wally. It's ghastly. Party, how did this happen? I can see a college man pulling up over like this, but not no janitor. Now, now this idea of yours. Now wait a minute, Wally. If there's one thing I will not do is take credit for another man's ideas, <laughs> especially when he's the boss's nephew. <laughs> you never told me you hired your nephew. Nephew? Oh, oh nephew. He, he's not my nephew, Wally. He, he's my wife's nephew. Now, this may seem like nepotism, but it's not, Wally. I, I never showed him any favoritism. In fact, I hate him. But you love his ideas. No, I didn't. When, when he first told me the idea, I thought it was a lousy idea. And then when Finch brought it to me, I still said it was a lousy idea. And I told Finch it was a lousy idea. Why did you buy it? Seemed like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> treasure hunts, treasure girls? Well, Finch dressed it all up. He, he can't deny the treasure girl was his idea. Yeah, that's, right. Right. Yeah, that's, right. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Wally. That idea was mine. And not a bad one. But who the hell picked that bubble-headed tomato? <laughs> now, Wally, I don't want you to... <laughs> Wally, she's a very nice girl. You ought to talk to her. I intend to. Well, I think I have the whole picture. Now the question is, what to do and who to do it to? Now wait a minute, Wally. Before you make any hasty decisions, I'd like to say a few words. About what? About humanity. You see, Wally, we're all part of the whole corporate setup. But deep down, under our skins, we're all flesh and blood. We're all brothers. Some of us are uncles. <laughs> now you may join the Elks, my friend, and I may join the Shriners, and other men may carry cards as members of the diners. Still others wear a golden key or small Greek letter pin. But I have learned there's one great club that all of us are in. There is a brotherhood, a man, a benevolent brotherhood, a man, a noble side of mind, all human hearts and minds, into one brotherhood of man. Give it brother all. Oh. 
hiring Mr. Bigley. Who's considering that? Get away with that thing. <laughs> you see, Wally, I know what's on your mind. You want to clear up the whole crowd from top to bottom. But stop and think. One man may seem incompetent, another not make sense, while others look like quite a waste of company expense. They need a brother's leadership, so please don't do them in. Remember, mediocrity is not a mortal sin. There here at Worldwide Wickets. I am speaking to you now in my new capacity as Vice President in charge of employee morale and psychological adjustment. <laughs> Mr. Tackerberry here is now in charge of personnel. And now we'd like to hear a word from our hard-driving, hard-working President, J.B. Bigley. you go to a very bright and very loyal young man. <coughs> Come out here, Finch. As you know, this young man's rise has been spectacularly rapid. As a matter of fact, for a while there, I began to feel that he was after my job. <laughs> but luckily for me, he didn't want it. No, no, J.B., your job is much too tough for me. But if any credit is due, it should go to a great man and a great humanitarian, the chairman of the board, Mr. Wally Womper. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, 
fact, Mr. Whopper should be arriving any moment. He's arriving today with his charming new bride. Oh, and here they are now. a newlywed, you know, but I have a special announcement to make about him. Mr. Whopper feels that after his long years of service and dedication serving as chairman of the board, he's going to retire. He and his charming new bride are going to take a long honeymoon trip around the world. Concentrate on you. Tell us who is going to be the new chairman of the board, as if I didn't know. No, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can accept. I'll need to consult with Mrs. Finch. Oh, Rosemary, your husband calling you. Hallelujah. Rosemary, I've got a big decision to make. They want to make me chairman of the board. What do you think? Oh, darling. I don't care if you work in the mailroom or you're chairman of the board or you're president of the United States. I love you. Say that again. I love you. No, before that. <laughs> the jokes take a while to the White House. Watch out. 